here, I've been helping CKD patients improve their kidney function for more than 10 years now. Today, I'm not here to talk about what's probably the most effective way of helping your kidneys. I'm here to share with you something that could change your life and your health for the better. Something that many doctors will still deny or dismiss. I'm here to tell you that it is possible to improve your kidney function not just a little bit, but a lot. Not just temporarily, but permanently. Because today, results that may have been considered impossible just a few years ago can happen. In particular, today I want to tell you about CKD patients who were in stage 3 and 4 and that started to improve as soon as they were given just one tablet of one supplement a day. Yes, this achievement that was considered impossible just a few years ago has now been documented in literature. Now, the most crucial part, this can be achieved by most kidney disease sufferers, no matter the stage they are in. So question, what should someone with CKD do? to be able to improve their kidney function reliably? The very first step is following an alkaline diet. An alkaline diet is basically another way to call a modern renal diet. This is a diet that is low in acidic foods, such as processed foods, dairy, meat, and junk foods, and high in alkaline foods, such as fruit and vegetables. This is extremely important because it's impossible to improve without doing this and in some cases without taking the supplement that I'm going to show you today. Now you may ask, do I really need to give up all my favorite foods in order to improve? You see, a typical Western diet produces a lot of acid every day, much more than the kidneys of someone with CKD can excrete. When this happens, a condition called metabolic acidosis may develop. Metabolic acidosis is fairly common. Statistics say that approximately 40% of those with stage 4 CKD have it. And that's very bad because it can cause symptoms such as confusion, headache, nausea, weakness, and a faster decline in kidney function. So while for the general population, eating tons of acid-forming foods such as meat, cheese, processed grains, sweets, and soft drinks is harmless, People with kidney disease may actually damage their kidneys by doing so. When there is too much acidity in the body, which the kidneys cannot excrete, several bad things are going to happen. First of all, the kidneys are going to be damaged faster, your bones get eroded, diabetes gets worse, anemia can also be a consequence. This is why, according to medical literature, someone with kidney disease should intake way less acid-forming foods than the general population. Now, the most incredible part. For many CKD patients, controlling body acidity is enough to stop and even reverse the decline of kidney function. Is lowering body acidity really going to be enough to improve kidney function? Yes, many patients are able to reverse the decline of GFR just by eating more alkaline. This is a proven fact. In this large study, patients have slowed down GFR decline and in many cases improved just by eating more fruit and veggies and less animal protein. Now guys, if you follow me here regularly, you are probably going to remember a case study that we examined about one month ago. In this study, a dialysis patient was able to completely withdraw from dialysis. So he had very little remaining kidney function and he was on dialysis for almost a year. But then he improved at the point that he didn't need dialysis anymore. How is this possible? Well, this man was started on an alkaline diet. Yes, the most important thing in order to reverse the decline of kidney function is to focus on a diet that decreases the acid load on the kidneys. So question, in order to achieve this, what foods are always to be present in a renal diet? You see, when it comes to the diet, focusing on what to avoid seldom works. Instead, what I recommend is to start each meal with a superfood. 
something that can really make a positive difference because now you are eating more often the foods that are more alkaline and more protective for the kidneys. So try starting your meals with fruits such as apricots. This fruit is a must in a renal diet. It's low on the glycemic scale, making it perfect for people with diabetes, very rich in fiber and very alkaline. Apricots also have significant health benefits. Apricots are a good source of iron and copper essential to fight anemia. Apricots are widely used by the cosmetic industry because the combination of vitamin A, vitamin C and phytonutrients they contain can effectively reduce signs of aging on the body. Another super underrated alkaline fruit is kiwi. This fruit is a great source of vitamin C, actually better than citrus fruits, making it excellent for kidney health. Kiwi is considered a superfood because it possesses properties that lower blood pressure and reduce bad cholesterol levels. Okay, now you may ask, isn't kiwi acidic? Many people think that this fruit is acid forming because it tastes sour, but kiwis are actually alkaline. What we must understand about the alkalinity of food, which is key to improve kidney health as we have seen, is that foods that taste sour or acidic are not necessarily acid forming. Kiwi is, in fact, alkaline in the body. What really matters for us is something called PRAL or potential renal acid load. This value tells us how much a food is heavy on the kidneys. Higher PRAL values indicate more acid is produced from that food. As you can see here, the foods with the highest PRAL scores are all those foods you are supposed to avoid. Foods with negative PRAL values, on the other hand, such as most fruit and vegetables, are actually helping the kidneys removing acid. This protects them. So another great example of a fruit that removes acid from the body is cherries. In season right now, cherries are another underrated superfood. They are not just alkaline, as we can see from their Pral score. Cherries will also protect the kidneys from uric acid and gout. They are the only fruit with this benefit. Another reason why I think that cherries are one of the most underrated superfoods is their content in melatonin. Melatonin is the sleep hormone and eating cherries for dinner or before sleep may help you sleep better. Yes, these foods will protect your kidneys in many ways. Question, what veggies are a must in a diet that fights excess acidity? When following a renal diet, veggies must be the foods you eat most often. And while basically any veggie comes with many vitamins and health benefits, there are a few that I strongly recommend in an alkaline diet. Some of my favorites include kohlrabi. This is a vegetable in the Brassica Larasha family that comes either in green or purple and can be eaten raw or cooked. It is very alkaline at PRAL minus 5.6 and it is also rich in many of the micronutrients skinny disease patients are often deficient in. Include it in your diet. If you can't find it, well, bell pepper is also very healthy with a PRAL score of minus 3.5 when eaten raw. Peppers are low in calories and exceptionally rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, folic acid and other antioxidants. And this makes the bell pepper a great addition to any healthy diet. Now let's talk about green leafy vegetables. Many green leafy vegetables are incredibly healthy for you. They always take all the top spots in the Prowl score charts. Arugula, for example, has a Prowl score of minus 7.5, which is incredible. Arugula is a cousin of broccoli, kale and cabbage and shares many of their health benefits. Not to mention that arugula is also a source of nitrates. Just like beets, for example, these foods have a vasodilating effect that actually improves blood flow and fights hypertension. Other greens you should always consider are lettuce, kale, celery, parsley, and mustard greens. All very healthy. Try also including spinach, which is high in potassium but also probably the best food in terms of Prowl score ever with a Prowl of minus 14.0. But why do all the most alkaline foods have potassium? Because you see, the higher the potassium content of foods, the more alkaline they are. The reason is simple. Potassium is a base mineral. It is itself alkaline. And now you may ask, isn't eating this fruit and veggies going to increase potassium levels too much for people with CKD? 
Well, as you may already know, the way high potassium levels in CKD are managed change. There is no more limiting potassium for everyone. Only patients with diagnosed hyperkalemia are supposed to limit potassium and just for a limited amount of time. And the reason for that is simple. You see, according to most recent research, dietary potassium is very weakly linked to hyperkalemia or high potassium in blood. In particular, a study compared the potassium in blood in pre-dialysis patients. When dietary potassium went from 500mg a day to 4,500mg a day, a ninefold difference, there was a very small increase in potassium in blood. And you see, there are also studies supporting the possibility that kidney disease patients who start to eat more potassium-rich foods may actually decrease their serum potassium levels. Wait, wait, wait. What? How is this possible? Because metabolic acidosis is actually one of the main causes of high potassium levels. Metabolic acidosis happens when there is too much acidity in the body, which is exactly the issue we are trying to solve by eating more alkaline foods. And since alkaline foods are also rich in potassium, there is a possibility that eating more potassium-rich foods may decrease the risk for hyperkalemia. Isn't it incredible how the human body works? And now you may ask, Catherine, you say that there is one tablet that people need in order to improve. What is it? Yes, there is also supplement that can really make a big difference in making your body more alkaline. Many studies claim that using this supplement makes almost as much difference as doubling the number of daily portions of fruits and veggies. Just one more thing before that. Question, what foods should you completely avoid in a renal diet? As I was saying, it's vital to make sure that we are drastically reducing the amount of acid our kidneys have to process every day. And there are five categories of foods you should absolutely avoid. Desserts and snacks such as ice creams, candies, pastries and so on should always be avoided, especially by diabetics. These foods are also acid forming and also fried high fat foods and processed foods in general are very acid forming too. Dairy should be avoided too. And also avoid meat. Meat is one of the most acid forming foods on the menu. Also, it's a source of protein, which is known to directly damage the kidneys. Last group to avoid acid inducing drinks, especially dark colas. Okay, time now to see the most helpful remedy in the world when it comes to fighting metabolic acidosis or excess of acid in blood. This is sodium bicarbonate. Question, can sodium bicarbonate really help you slow down the decline of GFR? Yes, in studies on CKD stage 4 patients, those that took sodium bicarbonate tablets were able to delay dialysis significantly. This study compared the normal treatment for stage 4 and 5 CKD with also taking sodium bicarbonate. The results were very significant. Patients in stage 4 had just 2.3 points decline in GFR in a year when taking sodium bicarbonate. Those not taking it had, however, a 6.58 points decline in eGFR. This is a very significant difference and means that for those patients it was possible to significantly delay dialysis just by taking one tablet a day. This is also why current guidelines state that patients in stage 4 and 5 of chronic kidney disease should take sodium bicarbonate. Now guys, I hope that many of you already know how crucial taking sodium bicarbonate is for kidney health. But this supplement is still controversial in a way. For example, I've received some comments asking me about the safety of taking sodium bicarbonate. One of the main concerns is sodium you see, kidney disease patients are usually told to avoid salt or sodium intake. So the question is, is there an alternative to sodium bicarbonate that doesn't contain sodium? Keep in mind that sodium bicarbonate is the safest and the most widely prescribed way of keeping acid level in the right range today, but it has a few unwanted effects, especially the sodium content. And for some patients, another supplement may also be effective in controlling acidity. So the other supplement that could be taken to control acidity is magnesium. Supplementing magnesium has a very significant alkalizing effect on the body. Now as usual, I recommend to consult a doctor before taking either sodium bicarbonate or magnesium or both. 
This is always my advice, even if these supplements are both widely used and safe. But also keep in mind that you should also be knowledgeable about these supplements in order to make an informed decision, especially when it comes to magnesium. If you learn more about it, you may actually use magnesium to make a difference. And I've made a full video about it. It's up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.